Hey Goose Buddies, it's Chad. Apologies for the delay. Let me explain why it's taken so long as it's relevant to your listening interest. We've changed podcasting hosts. Word of advice, never use Podomatic. They are the worst. If you're hearing this episode, it probably means you're already synced to the correct new feed, which is our Libsyn account at goosebuds.libsyn.com slash rss. But if you have other friends, help educate them. We need to lose any of you wonderful people. Again, apologies for the maintenance. I know it's super frustrating. We've been unable to get you new episodes due to this hosting problem. It's been so painful to sit on this episode for so long until we got it fixed out. It takes a while. Uh, Podomatic, they slap you to strangle you and tell you bad puns a million times. You guys are really, really terrible. Zero out of ten rating. Anyway, thanks again for all your support, guys. We love that you stick around. We're going to have more episodes coming sooner and sooner. And enjoy this new tasty episode. Welcome, everyone, to another edition of Goose Buds. Something happened to the last (laughs) files of this episode, and they were mysteriously corrupted. (laughs) Okay, okay. That was scary, but as soon as you start talking about files and computer things, <laughs> Demon Voice loses all scariness. Uh, uh, oh, really? I got a little episode of the X-Files for you to watch. <laughs> it's called Ghost in the Shell, I think. Oh, <laughs> shit. I've seen that anime. That one's good. Well, I think it's the Halloween episode where a computer kills a man. <laughs> oh, my God. By, by depressing him with sad news stories? How does he kill a man? With goose buds. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, Dom, I want to plus your follow-up. Uh, other scary thing? Uh, are you afraid of the dark? There was definitely a gremlin that just lived in technology. And what? Yeah, I don't remember what it did other than it would just jump into, like, the TV, and then a picture of a gremlin would pop up, and then it would jump into, like, the camera, and then the camera that's would That's just... a good episode. Yeah, that's a good episode where he, the kid has, like, a computer chip on his arm. He, oh, because he goes to school to play a new video game, and it's, like, brain scan where he can't tell if he's in the video game or not. Ooh, that's oh, that's cool. Shit. You remember when I, yeah, I don't remember, like, what was really... It was terrifying as a kid, but I was, like, now just, like, I don't know, just, like, unplug the TV. Like, I don't know, just... Whatever, no way, whatever. dude. So we can jump into another TV and turn it on? <laughs> <laughs> he's going to fucking run up your power bill. Listen, You know, it. if you try to change the channel, he's just going to appear in every show being like, uh, well, uh, oh, next to 500 question for Alex. Today, please. <laughs> and like he's going to be on Jeopardy or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I first thought you were doing the 700 Club. I was like, he's going to teleport into the 700 Club on Sunday mornings. Yeah, I thought, oh, the five, yes. I thought it was going to be the 500 Club. I thought we were going to learn about some new religions television show. <laughs> oh, yes. The 500 I, Club. I am a gremlin, and I'm here to talk to you about the Jesus. <laughs> I, I, you know what I should do? I should call into Coast to Coast and tell uh-huh. them about uh, our spooky uh, Corrupted Files story. Yeah, see what they think about that, huh? What is Coast to Coast? Coast to Coast is that uh, late night uh, radio show uh, that focuses on uh, paranormal uh, things that have happened. Uh, so, like, people call in, they're like, I just worked at Area 51 and you won't believe the <laughs> alien dick I just saw. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I'm going to have to look this up and then just destroy them because they're a rival to Paranoia Shop, the other sister show. They're, no, but see, you guys are, are, are having a good time. These guys are, like, in a bunker being like, shit is going to fall apart any minute now. And we're the only yeah. show that can stop it. Oh, they're genuinely and then, worried. And, and then they're like, and here's our next guest, a guy who thinks magic exists and that he controls <laughs> it and can heal people. <laughs> <laughs> I should. I actually. Well, that's a good plug for a podcast. I'm checking that out immediately afterwards. Hey, speaking of podcasts, Dom's podcast, his other podcast, Fantasy Fiction, just launched the Patreon, and they're doing pretty well. And they can use some help. So if you guys listen to this podcast, throw our friends some love, give yeah, them some money, help guys, them make some more. Congratulations on yeah. the launch of the Fantasy Fiction podcast. If you somehow listen to this show and not Fantasy Fiction. Your priorities are probably in a little bit of bad order, uh, <laughs> but Fantasy Fiction just launched their Patreon, and it is great. Guys, uh, I've chipped in. Paul, I don't know if I'm going to put you in the spot, but I assume you chipped in. 
Oh. I'm Egyptian. <laughs> Whoa, oh, who's that? that? That's, my, that's my demon avatar speaking oh, for me. Yeah, that's okay. Paul's, yeah, that's Paul's demon avatar that lives inside his mouth. Yeah. Oh. It's kind of like Tony from The Shining. <laughs> <laughs> What was that? Was the ghost just like a finger ghost? Was that what it was working in the shine? It was a little, uh, it was a little man it, that lived in his finger. It was a part, I think, of Danny's ability to connect with the spirit world. Like, things start going crazy at uh, the Overlook because Danny's magic. Right. Basically. Oh, yeah. They, they don't cover that in the movie that much. Have you guys read no. the book? Have you guys read the book for The Shining? I, I haven't read the book, but I've read a lot about the book. I've never, <laughs> I've never read it, but I hear that it's shit. I hear Wait, like the what? movie is like leagues beyond no, it. No, no. All right, here's the thing. All right, so short tangent on The Shining. All yes, right. yes. The book goes into the Stephen King levels of weirdness every once in a while, and there's definitely more of that dog in that guy's lap. That uh-huh. dog, that dog's a, a monster that chases little Timmy and says, "I'm gonna, I'm gonna bite your little cock off." That's a thing in the book. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Him. That's the thing. The, 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 Stephen King will go to really dark places and then just run around chasing people with it. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. But um, uh, a main thing they don't really address in the movie, even though it still kind of matches up, they just don't talk about, it, is that the ho- the Overlook Hotel is trying to get Danny. That Jack Nicholson's character doesn't matter at all. He is just being duped by the yeah. hotel. To kill Danny because they want to take Danny's psychic power. I mean, I get that sense from the from the movie. Yeah, it kind of matches know? up. They just don't spend as much time into that plot. It's like, oh, Danny right. just happens to be a psychic, and we just happen to be an evil ghost hotel. And if we can kill Danny, our psychic power, The Shining, will be tenfold as strong, and we'll just start taking over the world. I guess it's not really right. clear. Uh, yeah, well, they they'll get the world. The ghosts will get the world. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I guess they'll just um, like they should. Kubrick's they- version is leagues beyond. You know, yeah. I, I I mean, just as a movie on its own, like it's amazing. Oh, it's a spectacular movie. The yeah. one the one admission I will always be sad about, and I get it wouldn't work in the Kubrick version. It isn't like the weird lifetime version that they made with like Kirk Cameron. Yeah. Uh, the hedge animals is the most terrifying part of the book that's not in the movie. Oh, oh, that's like, right. Yeah, they come to life and start. I mean, they basically just chase them. And they're like, "Oh my god!" Yeah, but they do the whole thing of like, whenever you look at them, they don't move. That's cool. So like, Dan, cool. Danny's like in the snow, and he'll just start hearing like things behind him. And he'll turn, and suddenly that like lion hedge animal is like in an attack position, and so he'll start running, oh. and he'll like hear them behind him. And if he trips and turns over, he sees like a, a deer in mid like stabbing motion, like inches away from him. But they freeze whenever you look at them. So it's kind of like that Doctor Who. Blink episode before that was a thing. Right. It's like Boo. Yeah. It's like Boo. It's like Boo. Yeah, so you walk backwards is the trick. <laughs> well, yeah, he yeah. didn't. Well, at some point, Danny somehow realizes he's surrounded because he's a dumb little kid. Oh, right, right, right. right but, right. Uh, yeah, it's, it's the most terrifying thing. It wouldn't have worked in the Kubrick version exactly. I totally understand. But uh, let's talk about a different book. Why don't we talk about Goosebumps number eight? Uh, uh, not Attack of the Monster. I'm completely blanking on the name of girl, this fucking girl book. Who cried, girl, girl Who, who Cried Monster. monster. A.K.A. Uh, Aesop's Fi- Fi- bleh. <laughs> let's, let's do that again. Okay. A.K.A. A.K.A. Aesop's Fable, the, the Goosebumps book. He just <laughs> stole kind, it. He just stole it of, straight up. It kind of is. I didn't realize until after I read the book, I was like, oh, yeah, they're doing the whole boy who cried wolf thing. That's how dumb I am. It's like... Like, the book isn't even... He doesn't even try... Like Okay, he does try. At the very end, he adds this little twist to it. But beyond that, he just did the same story. So, wait, how do we feel about this book? What's our, well, what's our I initial think, I think it's either the best Goosebumps or the worst. Quite possibly one or the other. It's, it's one... It, I don't know. I think it's the worst. Depending <laughs> on what you're reading Goosebumps for, for right now, this is either the best one or the worst one. It's the best bad and- one or the worst good one. <laughs> <laughs> it's got the best ending so far. But uh, it's kind of amazing that this is so late in the game. I mean, this is eight books in, and it's, like, worse than book one. In my <laughs> it kind of is. So let, let's let's go over just a quick rundown of what happens in The Girl sure. Who Cried Monster, other than A Girl Crying Monster for most of the book. Uh, uh, by the way, our memories are are a little bit wonky, because if you didn't catch from Dom's spooky story... This is the second time we've recorded our discussion over this book. Yeah, and I'm pretty upset because apparently we, t- we have notes about what we talked about. And apparently, <laughs> somehow we started talking about Tom Waits. And I'm really sad that we're not yeah, going to talk at about At some point, we started talking about Tom Waits. I don't know why. I just want to talk about Nighthawks at the Diner this entire podcast. Because it's great. <laughs> I guess maybe because he has a spooky voice. I just really can't connect. <laughs> hey, if Tom Waits read any of these books to me, I'd be real scared. 
Yeah, I just have written down from our recap from last time. Tom Waits, pretty scary voice. Maybe just a hobo. I'm not sure. Yeah, he's a, he's a hobo that snuck into a recording studio one day, and they were like, we're giving this guy a career. <laughs> I'm, I'm also glad we still found a way to talk about Tom Waits by talking about how we don't know how to talk about Tom Waits. <laughs> yeah, yeah and, then, and achieved. We did it. That's pretty ingenious. <laughs> so this story of the girl who cried monster. Uh, uh-huh. Girl, uh, let's, I'm trying to remember. Girl lives in a small town. Uh, yeah. Goes into her library. She's an avid reader, so props to her. Uh, weird that there wasn't a Goosebumps reference, right? Like, I think he did. I think there was one moment where he, there is because she wants to read the spooky books that all her friends are reading, but he right. never assigns those to the for the Reading Rangers program, which is what she's a part of. Right. So, we, are we supposed to imply that those are Goosebumps? That like those are the really tough ones? Okay. Yeah. I, I well, they're not tough. They they're never they're like the the scary ones that are scaring all the kids nowadays. But his the hair librarian only hands out like classics like Mary Shelley's Frankenstein and stuff like that. Yeah, oh yeah. Well, by the way. Uh, you sh- she was probably looking for that Fear Street. Yeah, you know? <laughs> Fear Street. <laughs> I really wish they just plus it like, oh yeah, these scary books that are spooking all the kids, written by the sexiest Jewish man you've <laughs> ever seen. And just a sculpted by sculpted by, and then there's just like somehow five paragraphs talking about like yeah, the back of the book. The picture of the author, just like everyone in the room got wet. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I hear in some pictures he wears a hat and he looks <laughs> good in it. He looks good in a hat, folks. <laughs> really terrifying. Oh, yeah. So the Reading Rangers program that she's involved in uh, instantly reminded me of, also probably because last night, Dom, you and I had delicious uh, Pizza Hut. Uh, yeah, that's right. Number one place to take your kids for a cheap meal and then maybe have them throw up later in the car. Pizza Hut. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Pizza Hut had the Book It program, which yep. I was a fan of. Did you guys have that? Oh, absolutely, yeah. Uh, I didn't have it. I didn't, what? I didn't do it. Oh. Yeah, for, I guess they had just stopped it when I was coming through. Yeah, oh, dude. They, too many kids died oh, from the Book It program. Too they, many kids died, yeah. Too many kids to... read too many spooky books that all their friends were reading and yeah. died. <laughs> all died of yeah. fright. All I mean, are you familiar death. with the Book It program? Yeah, I'm familiar with it. You read books and you get a pizza. Yeah. A personal pan pizza, which was way better than the regular one. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, personal pan is real good. It's also, when you think about it now as an adult, it was a very easy, cheap ploy to get pizza to bring you in to spend $30 for a $3 pizza. Yeah, because oh, yeah. you got a $3 pizza and your parents were like, well, I got to eat pizza, I'm, too. Yeah, like, I always just sometimes wondered if there was like a really poor family. It's like, oh, Jonathan's read another five books. Finally, we'll eat tonight. And they just yeah, like go they and just, split it. <laughs> and just sit around a tiny little four-inch pizza. Just like, here's your two-inch slice of pizza. <laughs> Enjoy that yeah. for the rest of the week, please. Wait, could you lie? Was there tests on Book It? Like, could I just go in and be nah. like, I didn't, I read uh, Bridges of Madison County for sure. Is that a book? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, it is. And yet there were, there were no rules. But I'm sure when you were, uh, when you were showing up with like 30 slips for Book It, they were like, all right, we're going to have to, we're going to have to check you. <laughs> this we're is gonna uh, a background check here. If you brought your report card into Blockbuster and it was good, they would give you a free kids rental. Oh, yeah. And uh, I remember bringing it in. It was like all C's. And I was like, <laughs> oh, man. I hope they let me do this. And they totally let me rent something. And I was like, all right, going to continue this streak of not doing anything <laughs> in school. It would have been funny if they got to pick the game for you with C's. Just like, oh, yeah, man, this time you're just playing uh, Batman and Robin video game. That's all you get. That's the only <laughs> yeah. thing you get. Hey, man, give it to me. I'll play it. Hell I'm yeah. a kid. I'm going to make it work. I might have said this before in a story because it was a very like, uh, formative video- part of my video game years. I was not allowed to own a video game system past the Genesis all through my childhood. Why? The, uh, my parents, I was never able to convince my parents the idea that you would upgrade systems. Like, wow. I had a second Genesis, played every Genesis game I've, that ever came out that was good, which is only like 20 of them. Uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> but when the PlayStations, the N64s, and all that stuff came out, even the Xbox, it was like I could never convince them that that there was a reason to upgrade. It was always that old person logic of like, well, you have a Genesis, just play Halo on the Genesis. Like that kind of stuff, right? Uh-huh. So, yeah, we already have a stove. <laughs> we don't need to buy more stoves. Yeah. We don't yeah. have to buy new stoves pizzas, every year. Pizzas didn't get better. My stove still <laughs> makes pizza. <laughs> yeah, the, the, the pizza my stove makes is still good. To, to be fair, they did give me the option if I sold the Genesis, I could get a new console, but I loved that Genesis and couldn't get rid of it. So I just like... I loved right. those games and still played them. I loved Sonic so much, I couldn't get rid of them. But the only way I was able to play any of the games of that generation, and there's a decent amount, was through the Blockbuster free game rental. Because 
this is a hard thing to realize for people who are younger. You used to be able to rent video game consoles from Blockbuster, Hollywood oh videos. Oh, my God. Yes. Yep. Family videos. They were like $50 deposit. I have no idea how much they cost. Or no, sorry. It was like, like a it was $200, like $10, like $200 it was like $10 or $15 yeah. a weekend or something like yeah, that. Yeah, you had to put like... Yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't too much. But the big thing was the deposit, and parents did not want to put that deposit down. Oh, yeah, because like $300 or hell. something. Yeah, they were like, what are my kids going to get up to? They break everything. So They're going to break this. <laughs> they're going to throw it out the window. I don't know what's going to happen to this console. Yeah. Uh, the only way I played any games was I had to get high honor roll, which was a thing. It just means you got straight A's or something. I'm mm-hmm. not bragging. Middle elementary school is very easy. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but then I would be able to go in. High honor roll. Is that straight THC? <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah oh, I was man. part of an experimental um, that's a drug great joke, program. Guys. Hey, that one's on the house. <laughs> Free of charge. Hey, we didn't need that first half. We never needed it. Hey, we were going to have this half. I'm sorry. Yeah. Is Doug Benson in the room? Did Doug Benson just walk in and drop a weed joke of that caliber? <laughs> oh, yeah, I think, is that you know Comic-Con? what, I is think he haunted Comic-Con? my body. <laughs> uh, yeah, I played every game I played from PlayStation and all that stuff was from, like, renting a console and, like, two or three games, and then I had the weekend to cram. It was just like, these are your vacation weekends once every six months. Right. And I would just, so I didn't able to have, also the other challenge, uh, didn't have memory cards or anything to, to save games on. Oh, no. So I had to, like, leave the system running for 24 or 48 yep. hours straight and just yep. go to sleep, wake up, just start Crash Bandicoot again to beat it. It was mm-hmm. – I, bur- I destroyed some discs, to be fair. I think they burned some lasers. Well, you were playing games the way they were supposed to be played, which is just sheer attrition. Oh, yeah. That's the way it was supposed to happen. But then we got we got the media, you know, like the, 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 the uh, small media cards – and so all of a sudden, we became a soft peoples and we were... <laughs> the games, games are incredibly easy now. You look at Shovel Knight. Like, you can really play that game and get it to 100%, and it's tough. But, like, if you play through Shovel Knight, it's not hard. Right. Um, it's, it's such an easy game compared to it's the games it's modeled after. But I want to bring this con- conversation right back I was yes, just wondering, this how book. the fuck did we get off? <laughs> we, got, we, got, we got off the rails on a crazy train, and mm. I want to bring it right back. Please. Uh, we, uh, <laughs> um, uh, this book, this book, I know we, were, we started with the Reading Rangers. I want to I, I want to connect it right here. Please, yeah. There's, there's a character who runs the Reading Rangers who's a real weirdo, and he talks like a weirdo, and he smells like a weirdo. You know what I'm talking about. Uh-huh. And <laughs> he's got like a monster smell. Like you smell him and you're like, is this guy a monster? Or am I about to cry monster? It's mothballs. This, this, the smell is mothballs. The cover of the book. Now, the cover of the book is probably the most uninteresting Goosebumps cover ever. It's a girl peeking into a library where mm-hmm. a man who's wearing like a bookie. Yeah, it's visor. like an accountant an accountant outfit. Yeah, like a, some something a poker. Yeah, old 1950s poker man, players would wear with, those. With, 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 yeah, yeah. And uh he's uh he's about to eat a bug and he is into it. And that's not that creepy because people eat bugs. Uh 80% of the world eats bugs. <laughs> mm-hmm. And uh uh I, I heard that I heard that statistic on NPR last week, so that's a fact. Um but uh <laughs> uh that's what the cover of this book is and that's kind of like the big plot point of this book is that she catches him eating bugs and she's freaked out and she's like oh my god he's eating bugs i gotta go find this guy out and tell everyone he's a monster the well, other yeah. thing is is that at the beginning of this book she's terrorizing her little brother by being like there's monsters over there there's monsters over here and he's always gullible and he's always believing and that's kind of the cried monster yeah part. so like she's a horrible per- we talked about the tropes of this book She's a shitty kid, just like mm-hmm. the majority of the characters from these books. Super piece of shit. And she deserves what she gets because she's a piece of shit. She's she also a, a str- lone piece of shit kid. There's no other kids really to bounce off, so you're just following this piece of shit. You're fr- it, this is first-person perspective piece of shit. <laughs> she's- and, and, and Paul, you know what? Why don't you finish your point? I don't want to cut you off. Well, we're we- are we going to talk about terrible cliffhangers in these books? Because in this well, book... Well, I think, I think you need to talk about that right now. Go. <laughs> so we've, we've often talked about the terrible cliffhangers in these books. Just the end of the chapter, something scary is going to happen. I'm going to make you turn the page and read the next chapter. This one's excessively bad because it's told in the first-person perspective. So when she's, when she's leaving a cliffhanger, sometimes it's something scary outside of her control. But sometimes it's something like, my toes were missing. 
because what we find out on the next page is she had buried him in the ground. You can't get upset. You can't get upset about something that you're doing to somebody. She's being a piece of shit to us, to me, the reader. Yeah. She has like Straight a goldfish's up. memory span of like, I forgot putting my toes in the dirt. I guess I lost them. Or like, there's one point yeah. where she's in the library. She's seen this man running the library who's now eating bugs again not that weird his head does turn into some sort of balloon type he thing. does turn yeah he turns into like a turtle ghost a of turtle, some sort. A turtle ghost and she runs to the door and she realizes the door is locked and that is the cliffhanger yeah the cliffhanger is that she forgets how a lock works on a door and she's like oh it's like pull instead of push silly me <laughs> yeah it's literally oh no the door is locked Oh, here's the lock here. I'll, I'll unlock it and leave. <laughs> uh, but but the thing about this is, and, and he starts to turn into some sort of bug monster or whatever. Yeah. Or a seal's ghost, did you say? A, a, a seal, a, the a, singer. A, a turtle ghost. No, yeah. but also the ghost um, of the man who dated Heidi Klum who had those weird scars on his face. Yes, <laughs> yes. Seal's ghost. Seal's handsome ghost. Uh, <laughs> um, he, uh, he, he does nothing wrong. He's doing nothing wrong this whole time. He's really an innocent. Uh, he's just he's just eating bugs by himself in the library where no no one else is. So you know, it, it, it's something he needs to do. Clearly, that's where he gets his nutrition. Yeah. And she keeps going back. She keeps uh, the the rest of this book is her going back to get something from the library and seeing him eat more bugs <laughs> and getting freaked book. out. It's, the whole book is her that's the whole. That's the whole book, I, guys. I will give her credit that she at least, like, I gotta tell someone about this monster. And then she at least decides to go get photographic proof. But then it uh-huh. creates, like, a whole bumbling, like, oh, the flash was on. Or, like, weird, he didn't show up in the camera photo. So he's, like, right. a, also a vampire or something. I don't understand. That was never explained. Well, we'll talk yeah. about the, we should talk about the ending real well, quick so that we can talk about this. Sure, let's get to this idea. Before before I say okay. that, before I say the reveal, just so you understand this idea of she's literally seen a man only eat bugs and turtles at one point. He eats a turtle. Mm-hmm. Like he opens his mouth horrifyingly and eats a turtle. Again, yes, not a normal person, but he's doing right. nothing wrong. He's obviously trying to hide it. He's trying to like <laughs> keep his his shame, like it's his own, like this is his vice, man. Like, right? He knows it. Yeah, he knows it's a vice. He's doing it in private, so by himself. It, Although he's it, on it, town property, okay, he's on public. property. true. He's using a, a, <laughs> he gover- is, a government building. He is building. on public property. <laughs> it's a government but, building. But I mean, it, he's basically just a guy eating a whole pizza by himself, the, like, even alone. <laughs> which yeah. we've all done. Maybe <laughs> last, maybe <laughs> last night. But this whole story, <laughs> I ate a whole pizza last mm-hmm, night. This whole story. Is a metaphor for a bad version of like if you see something, say something. Like if you just yeah. made this like an analogy to just like a white girl seeing in, like late early two thousands, uh, yep. just seeing like a, a, a Middle Eastern guy just like working on his uh, a chemical collection, she goes and gets him arrested for being a terrorist, even though he did nothing uh-huh. wrong or whatever. That's, right, a, that's right. a weak he analogy. Was, he was going to cure cancer. Yeah. He was going to cure cancer. Yeah, he's right. just trying to hang out, and then he gets sent to Guantanamo Bay, even though he did nothing wrong. That's essentially what this girl... Right, just because he wanted to hide his thing from Big Pharma so that they didn't steal it from him and make the cure without mm-hmm. him. You know what I mean? That's the only reason he was doing it. Like, I mean, secret. we saw this same kind of plot line in Stay Out of the Basement, right? Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, guy's really just trying to mind his own business, and girls and kids just be snooping. Let, let me throw another analogy at your way. Let's say right. this is completely hypothetical. Let's say I, Chad Quant, like looking up pictures online of dragons fucking cars. That's just <laughs> okay. That's just my bag. Like I just, yes. it's not even sexual. I just appreciate how well they're drawn. I think it's interesting how a dragon's dick fits into a tailpipe perfectly. That's just mm-hmm. my jam. Mm-hmm. This is all hypothetical again. Right? Absolutely. Hypothetical that I go to dragonsfuckingcars.com and just have a good time. (laughs) And I'm doing it in the privacy of my apartment. And some kid in the apartment next to me. Let's just say for the story me. Yeah, Yeah. you come over, but don't tell me you're coming over. And Yeah, I do that fun thing where I spy on you and never come (laughs) in the house. You spy... Hey, kids will be kids, man. Yeah, exactly. You spy and see me just watching dragons fucking cars. And I don't know you're there. Maybe I suspect you do. And then you spend the rest of your next couple of weeks trying to undermine and tell everyone that I like to watch dragons, making sweet, sweet, tender love to these cars. Passionate, yes, passionate, tender love. You are kind of and the bad guy. I, I, I'm I'm the bad guy here. If I, if that, if this is what's happening, <laughs> hypothetical now, situation. I, I, I'm a bad guy. I'm not only am I spreading rumors, 
Because who knows how you got to that website? Yeah, right? yeah. I mean, even though I go to it all the time and it's bookmarked on my front page, how? Who knows? I don't know that. I don't yeah, know that. Yeah, I yeah. don't know that. Yeah. Uh, it's it's. I'm the bad guy. I I stir the pot. I keep getting in your way. You keep going to watch more dragons <laughs> fucking cars, and like I'm the flash is going off on my camera, and uh, uh, eventually, eventually, you come to my house and you say, Dom. You left this backpack in my <laughs> That's backyard. Right. That's yep. right. And I got, and I'm like, oh fuck, oh my fuck. He knows. <laughs> he knows. <laughs> and then you leave, and it's not a big deal. That's something. <laughs> yeah, so because yeah. you're, you're a grown up that can be like, hey, I got, I got my vices. Yeah, and I can yeah. Deal with it. In this book, the, if you're not understanding what Dom just did, that happens where he finds the book, the, the book bag the girl left over, and just gives it to her and lets her be, even if he suspects that she might know. He doesn't try to hurt her, like. He's just trying to live his life eating turtles and bugs and I guess just reading books. He likes books. We should be he reading books. He likes books. Hey, hey, I got I got I think I got another metaphor for what this book is about. Okay. Uh, we gotta talk about the ending first. Okay, sure. All right. So hit this so hit the us ending. With this ending, the amazing twist of the book series. The amazing twist, and we again, it's an Aesop fable one to one analogy to the girl the boy who cried wolf. I like that he does the gender swap though. Mm-hmm. Uh, he, uh so it's one to one until she catches him, he sees her, and then she runs home, she, and she has proof. I forget how she gets proof. What is the proof? I again? think she just, like, tells him and they believe her? It's, is that what it is? I think maybe, like, yeah, eventually they're just like, okay, we'll believe you now. Something yeah, like that. Yeah, the, because, because, of, because of the ending, I mean, it makes sense. Yeah, the, fo- right, the right, photo yeah. doesn't even work that she takes, does not show up, so she literally just says... I saw him just eating bugs in the library, and he looked like this. And they're like, "Oh, you know what it is? She gets her friend to go with, and he finally sees it. Like she tries to get him to go with once, and and they don't see it. And then the second time, she gets him to go with. That's right. He had to get braces or some shit the first time. Oh yeah, braces got in the way. <laughs> Somehow, just having a friend brother like verify it instantly makes it believable. Yeah. Then suddenly the parents were like, "Oh, you're not lying about monsters." Okay. Yeah. And then. Then they invite him over for dinner. And then at that moment, I knew that they were monsters and they were going to eat him. And that's exactly what happens. They devour him. Uh, they seem to be some sort of vampire being who yeah. enjoys eating. You you uh, knew this was coming. You, I did not see this coming at all. They they literally just go like, oh, hey, so I'm over here. I'm the nice, friendly, just fat uh, balloon frog monster. <laughs> yeah. What's for dinner? You are. And then they just devour yeah. him. And she yep. knows about this. Mm-hmm. And she mm-hmm. can't eat them yet because she's too young because her fangs haven't come in yet. So her and her brother. Now, now I watched the episode of this. They turn into snake monsters at the <laughs> okay. end. Okay. Mm-hmm. And not only that, but then after they eat the guy, they see a, a bug's head <laughs> outside of their window, okay. just like just like standing there. And she's like, oh, no, another one. And then, like, the parents are like, we got this. And then the kid pulls off his fly mask, and he's like, hey, guys, what's for dinner? It's like the neighbor or something, right? Yeah. It's her friend who who just saw the monster. For some reason, he put on a mask (laughs) and started to dilly-dally outside of their window. Right. And they're like, we just finished dinner, but we were moving on to dessert or something. And he's like, oh, what's for dessert? And And they're like... You are so not even. Not only <laughs> do they attack a a a guy slash monster who is minding his own business, they're going to eat her friend, and she's fine with it. Yeah, right. Yeah, there's a weird line I believe where she says like they eat other monsters to keep monsters out of town, almost implying that they are like protecting the town, but they're clearly just predator monsters. It's a food chain. It's a thing. food they're chain. Staying, thing. Yeah, they gotta stay at the top of it. Hey, my, my analogy for what this is, it's the witness protection program. That monster was in witness <laughs> protection. And these are some straight-up Sicilian motherfuckers <laughs> who are like, this guy broke Omerta, and we're going to eat the shit out of him. You know what happened is that he was eating bugs one day, and he saw a monster eating a human. He was like, oh, shit. Mm-hmm. And then like he was like, all right, I got to change towns and start working at this library. I'll just eat bugs alone where I don't see anything crazy. Yep. Yeah, he really is, again, doing nothing wrong. I guess I was just the dark twist of the book series. But, I don't know, it kind of bothers me that he absolutely is completely innocent. Like, if he had tried to eat her back, you know, like, oh, you're a small, like, smaller guppy predator, I can eat you. And you, like, find out he gets eaten by the parents. Like, yeah, family looking out for each other. But really, he seemed to just want to mind his own business. I feel... Absolutely. Yeah. 
I mean, guys, I mean, I'll just say the girl who cried monster is a monster, literally Mm -hmm. and figuratively. Uh huh. Uh, maybe. Go ahead. She's got sweet 90s cool because she rides rollerblades. (laughs) That's right. She rollerblades her. This book does have sweet 90s cool and it's got rollerblades, got that cool frisbee thing that's attached to a rope. Uh, it's got that pool. There's probably Huey it's Lewis foxtail. Is anyone playing a foxtail in it? A foxtail? Do you remember those? Are no, the, I don't remember. Are you talking those. about the thing where the kids like put foxtails face... in their butts? No, not in their I butts. Know. I mean, like on their pockets. Like I saw kids used to do that stuff. They'd have like foxtails hanging what, out. What 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 this toy is is that it's like a ball. Like I think it's like a softer baseball or something. Oh, I'm and looking it's at got it. Like it's got like a um, tail that has different colors. Like it's, it's, it's like a tennis a, ball with a with a tail on it. Uh, well, when I had one, it was a baseball because it oh, flew okay. higher. So basically, you take it by the tail and you spin it, and then you throw it up in the air. And when it's falling back, you try to catch it by the tail, and whatever color you caught, that's the corresponding point that you get. So that's what that is. That seems very... it's a cool hip toy that not everyone had because it was too cool. And I, <laughs> I think you, I think you made this. I think you created this game. Yeah, my father, Father Foxtail. That's <laughs> father my, Foxtail. My <laughs> I, w- I want to clarify what I thought you were talking about. Was do you guys have like? After we were old enough, there was, like, a teenage fad around the time of Twilight of, like, kids going to school pretending to be, fo- like, werewolves. But their outfit consisted of just wearing normal street clothes, maybe bracelets, and then putting, like, a foxtail hanging out of the butt of their jeans to imply that that was just their wolf tail just, like, slipping out. What? There are, like, news stories are cr- about Are you it. crying wolf on me now? I am not crying, crying wolf. wolf. <laughs> I, I'm crying wolf, but it's for real. You can look up news stories. I will send you guys a link later. You crying teen wolf on me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think it was, like, a response to all the Twilight guys, like, dressed up like Ed, uh, Edward as vampires. I was like, well, I want to be a werewolf, but how can I do that? I can't go shirtless. I don't have any body hair. I'll put a little fox still sticking out of my butt. That'll get drive all the girls crazy, and it did. Gangs have gotten weird, guys. <laughs> yeah. It's the worst West Side Story version I've ever yeah. heard. So this, the, We're the best. This librarian guy, Mr. Mortman, I'm going to say uh, most likable. He's the protagonist in some ways. Most yes. likable Goosebumps yeah, he, character. He's, le- he's on his own, doing his own thing, but when he interacts with a girl, he... Uh, encourages her to read books and gives her books to read and then he returns her book bag even though he is well aware that he is being spied on at this point and after she catches him doing his weird fetish stuff at his house even when she's spying on him he says oh it's okay we're okay and and then she invites him over for dinner and he goes over to eat dinner with her family and and presumably resolve resolve any issue that may be there i would hang i would hang with this man I would. Too. I could see myself going in the library, going, "Yo, Mister Mormon, what's going on?" He's like, "Hey, Chad, how's it going?" Ah, uh, sorry for all the slime. I'm sorry. I'm really trying to keep it under crap. I was like, "Hey, man, Mister Mormon, I understand. I have body body problems too. It's okay." And then I high five him and I toss him uh-huh. a bag of like crickets. Like, "Hey, man, you keep keep this library going. God bless reading, right?" Yeah, he gives you your new animorphs every week. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I would love Mister Mormon. He's like, "Hey, just." Don't tell anyone about this, right? Like, oh, that's right, Mr. Borman. It's all good. And then You got it, man. Hey, you're a weirdo, but you're not hurting anyone. And then over time, he reveals the secrets of his monster powers, and I get immortality. That's where I think it happens. I think you find out he's a part of, like, a, <laughs> a monster race of immortals. As long as they're not eaten, they live forever. And I become one Absolutely. of them. I like well, your that world. might be I... the scary part. Yeah, that might be the <laughs> that scary might be part. The scary that's true. Part. The implications of that in the long run, Chad, you might have to think about that for a bit. I mean, you're my friend, Chad. I want you to be a human mm. friend for as long as possible. But yeah. mm, I'm going to think about it. I'm going to get back on it. Let's, let's, let's wrap it on this idea. Lucy, the girl, is a piece of shit. She sucks. She stinks. Hater. She is the worst kid. She's the worst kid so far. <laughs> So how about when she goes to the mall, guys? This is another Goosebumps trope here. We have a moment where it, surely she'll have proof. It'll all be resolved. It's going to happen right here in the middle of the book, even though there's half a book left. We're going to figure it out right now. Mm-hmm. Sadly, the photo she took with the flash on, like a bonehead, all like another trope. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> the kid's just doing the dumbest things yep. um, But uh, uh, to get themselves found out. But he, she has the picture developed, and what's on it? Nothing but an empty desk, guys. He's invisible. The monster was invisible. So he's like a vampire, even though really, I mean, it's fine. Invent your own monster. This is the most con- This is the most confusing monster, by again, by the way. He's like, uh, in the book, more than a TV show, a balloon 
head with mushroom eyes that is also invisible to uh, light detection. I'm trying to think of the scientific way to explain cameras. Okay. But... Well, if he is invisible to cameras and he's a monster, how come the monster doesn't know that monsters are invisible when their picture is taken? Oh. She's a monster. Oh. oh. She should know. Wait. Okay. All right. I'm going to try to give them the benefit of the doubt. This is a new class of monster in town <laughs> that they have never encountered before. Because they never uh-huh. say, oh, it was a tasty glip glop. Uh, we haven't had one of those in forever. <laughs> a tasty so, glip glop, yep. A tasty glip glop. That's because the monster is unnamed. Yep. I fucking hate these fam. I hate this family so much. I, I know that's supposed to be them. the twist. But, you know, the, 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 the TV show, Dom, just looking at the pictures and you describing it, did they at all get really smart where they had this kind of call, whole food chain type thing? Because there's really a uh, missed opportunity there. No, it's really just this threat of the monster like coming near her, her going back, the monster coming near her, her going back home, the monster coming over her house and being weird. And then finally when the monster is over for dinner. And that, like that's like basically the entire – I mean it, it's it, when I say it's so linear, it is because it's like – she keeps going back to the library because of dumb reasons. She forgot her rollerblades. <laughs> uh-huh. I think. I think in the show she just forgot her book bag. But um, does she not have sweet rollerblades? You know what? I got a new title for this book. R.L. Stein cried monster. He said there was going to be a monster in this <laughs> oh, book. He barely oh, knows shit. what it looks like. He's we, really. We don't know what kind of monster it really is. And before we can find any of that out, it's eaten by other monsters who <laughs> were apparently there the whole time. So, R.L. Stein, you're a jerk. I'm just saying there's some really missed, deep, interesting like science fiction jerking off in the, in the form of like the, the monster eats smaller creatures, spiders, flies, whatever oh, eels yeah. fish and then it's eaten by a bigger predator and if if the monster's viewpoint had just been like there can't be other monsters in the town because we got to maintain order because that monster was doing virtually nothing to them like right if, if it really just been like we feed on monsters when they come to this town i guess like okay there's a food chain thing but then i'd pitch just like when they look over in the window it's aaron and he's just a fly man and he's just screaming and he just like eats all of them like it just and then the book continues for like another 20 pages of just oh. another monster showing up and just eating the like a bigger fish eating a smaller fish now that I'm would be that. cool that would be cool this was the first episode as i said that uh, that aired of goosebumps and i remember being a kid and watching it and being like I think I think I missed the ending. I thought I could get home in time, but I missed the ending. Uh-huh. But someone told me what it was because I think my brother Sergio was at home watching it, and I remember being disappointed and being like, "Man, that that wasn't really that good." Like I was old <laughs> enough to make that decision now, right. but I knew I was going to watch it tomorrow because I was a kid who didn't have shit else to do. <laughs> yeah. So, what do we think is the over under chance that the author didn't have this ingenious slash terrible ending idea in mind? And really, just at the point when the girl tells the parents about the monster, he just didn't know where else to go, and was suddenly, you know, given the genius idea of like, well, what if they, what if they eated him? I guess I could just, I guess I could just explain. Oh, there could be monsters. Like, do you think that was always planned, or do you think it was I don't just think a, so? I, I don't know how to get out of here. I don't know how to get out of this trap I put for myself. I think he was writing himself into a corner, and he was like, well, they're gonna eat him now. Um, that's the, all the I got. Drafts- the drafts due in two hours. I got to hurry. R.L. is going to break my list. <laughs> yeah, the ghost writer was saying this. <laughs> well, it's just the first draft. All right, let's just get it done. <laughs> uh, I couldn't get over stop thinking about Mr. – not Mr. Mortman or whatever his name is. Uh, the monster. Again, not hurting anyone other than eating some animals. Right. Uh he must be purchasing these things from a pet store somewhere. Yeah, he's putting the and pet I, store into some good business with this. I you kept know? thinking about it. It's like his interaction with the pet store must have been – just imagine that character, this like fat, bald, just like creepy old man who just keeps – apparently keeps stroking his many chins was always a description they would use for him. Uh-huh. Waddling over and just going, I'll take, I'll take eight more eels. Didn't we sell you eels like last week? I want eight more eels. Okay, okay. <laughs> Oh, okay. Okay. Right. okay. Give the man his eels. All right. I'm Give assuming you eels. also want the giant, the tub of flies. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so, yes. The tub of flies. All right. You'll get <laughs> it. Sure. Sure. Uh, <laughs> sir, I mean, we appreciate your business, but we, 
I feel like I'm I'm powered by some unspoken code of ethics to ask you why you're doing <laughs> this. Uh, just give me more eels. Okay, sir. It's fine. All right, it's sir. For the library. <laughs> <laughs> I got the Reading Rangers coming in. <laughs> oh, sir, the Reading Ranger. Oh, my. Why, I hear they read a book a week. I am impressed. This Please. is our system. I can go over the entire star system. <laughs> That's, I just couldn't get over that scene in my head. Imagine uh, that. Sir, sir, we'll have a pallet of varmints out on the on the back on the back <laughs> for you later today. Just go out, go drive around there and grab your pallet, okay? You know, you know what I think it is? I think it's like one of those guys in a fancy restaurant was like, sir, would you like to just buy the whole bottle? It'd be cheaper by the buy the bottle. No, give it me per glass. Per glass, I'll decide how much I want. Sir, seriously, you're wasting so much money. I could get you a pallet of rats. No, per rat. Just like all of those annoying. Okay. If you I want to know the time. rats personally. <laughs> <laughs> it makes them taste better. <laughs> uh Guy, I think that's all I got to say about this book. You got that's any other? That's really all. Hold on, I, I actually got, got to say, I got a couple more notes. Here. Okay. <laughs> First, Randy, biggest coward. <laughs> just I liked He's your a child. I liked your gotcha <laughs> interview style title of Randy. Just like a picture, like a photo <laughs> popping up, and the text just screaming over his face. Biggest coward question. Biggest mark. coward. All the reason I say that superhero comic books are too scary for him. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah, all right. yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Come on. Spider-Man's too scary <laughs> for you? Yeah, man. A spider? Does well, you know, Does Randy have a heart condition? Is, are the thrills too much for him? <laughs> Maybe. I'm giving this way too much credit. Maybe as a monster, he is terrified of the thing that would defeat him, and that would be Spider-Man or, right. uh, I don't know, Doom Patrol or Hellboy. <laughs> okay. Okay, the things right. that would find his kind and defeat him, that actually would be the most horrifying. And then he grows up and he realizes that superheroes don't exist, and then he eats whoever the hell he wants. <laughs> <laughs> However, yeah. I guess it doesn't really make sense that like he would be afraid of other monsters. Oh, well, I guess so, if she's like, oh, there's toe biters in there. And he's like, "Well, I'm a monster. Toe biters might it must exist. I must be. It must be a real true. thing. That's why oh. he believes in all the monsters." Oh, Fuck. I completely, I completely forgot. And thank you for uh, Tit Snicker on the Reddit uh, subreddit mentioning this. <laughs> I completely forgot. By the way, your amazing name. He points yes. this out. Uh, I, I totally had written this down. I completely forgotten. He quotes this line from the wiki. Uh, it seems dire. This is when he's when she's cornered in the library. It seems dire, but then she comes up with the bright idea of tearing out a drawer of the card catalog. That's oh. my really second the contents note. on that the ground. Mis- Mr. Mortman, though still a monster, is also a librarian, and he stops his pursuit of Lucy to organize the cards. That was my second okay. note. I said I wrote his one weakness: disorganization. <laughs> like. <laughs> th- again, the nicest guy. He clearly has a like, crippling like OCD. Or he's just a, a love of... He's a good librarian, okay? <laughs> Let's you know not take that is, away from You know what this is, man? You know what this is? Is This is R.L. Stein picking on a guy that he saw eating his boogers once in the library. <laughs> That's what this is. <laughs> That's where this started. Uh, Leave the guy alone. R.L. Stein, just a big old bully. Oh, another note I had about R.L. Stein. He makes fun of the Frisbee thing. He makes fun of the pool, the cheap plastic pool that all the water just spills out of. I think that if Amazon had been around, this book wouldn't have had half as many bad reviews for products that that R.L. Stein couldn't write somewhere else. But he had to yeah, stick them in his just book. Just created a Yelp account. He would have been able to write R. all his bad reviews. Yeah. <laughs> write your bad reviews somewhere else, not in my young teen footage. R.L. Stein. <laughs> Uh, uh, his Stein. username would be R.L. Steinzia. Okay, I'm just, I'm just, it's real life. Completely, Steinzia. no one will and ever Steinzia notice. Is when he goes and he has a bad experience, and he steins you with a spooky ass review. <laughs> it scares people from coming to the restaurant. <laughs> uh, Paul, I don't want to step on if you have any other notes, but there's a few other brilliant little points in the no. subreddit. That was my last one. I just I just kept seeing him. He did the Frisbee thing, and he had that kid really struggling with that Frisbee on a rope thing. <laughs> uh, I will put out a few of them. Uh, maybe this was foreshadowing. Uh, okay. I just I just suddenly lost it. Uh, what, where the fuck is it? Oh, uh, Beard Dead said, uh, coming off the episode, one of the points he made is that uh, a choice quote from the father is, I happen to like big meatballs, which... St- <laughs> 
which stuck with me as well for no reason other than just a weird line to say. But is that supposed to be like foreshadowing for that they like to eat a lot of meat? I don't know what it was, but I know that I did make a note of that. And I thought that the uh, the family or like I guess the marriage dynamic was really intriguing me a lot more than the actual story was at that point. I was like, I want to hear about this meatball argument here. Well, it's a thing that monster couples do. <laughs> they get really big meatballs together, and it's something they they really like to eat together. Uh, Dom, is there something in the show where they all make an, a line at the end about going to get Chinese food? I don't think so, because I think the mall scene is kind of, it falls by the wayside. Like, she takes the photo, but it only serves as something to grab his attention. Okay, someone in the subreddit said they want to know if the line about let's go get Chinese food meant they're going to go eat Chinese people. But I don't remember that line in there, so maybe that no. was maybe that's that is a pretty that's a pretty good '90s staple, though. Going to get Chinese food with the family near the mall. Oh yeah, because yeah. Asian people were still pretty like fresh and different in America at that point in time. <laughs> <laughs> there was still a hip new thing in the '90s. Uh, there's yeah, man, I saw idea. I saw falling down, man. Yes, I know, I know what you're talking about. <laughs> uh, I, I want to put another another note from Beer Dead, which I think is interesting because again, Mr. Mormon. Very nice. I guess he's a monster who has no idea he's dealing with a monster family. But it, he seems to ask her questions that Lucy thinks are leading trap questions when like he comes over to visit. But like she doesn't – he doesn't really. He completely believes her when she just goes like, oh, the, the, the book was not – the book bag was not me. It must have been some other kid. He's like, oh, I believe you, Lucy. But – uh, the question for Bearded is, why does Mormon ask if Lucy thought the monster in Frankenstein was the most sympathetic character? For one thing, Lucy doesn't answer the question. She just asks if Mr. Mormon believes in monsters. We also never see any monsters in this episode in a sympathetic light. So Mormon immediately tries to kill Lucy as soon as he sees that she knows his secret. There isn't any moment of him trying to convince her that he's not a bad guy, despite being different. He's a monster and wants to eat people. I don't know. I never actually knew if he was going to eat Lucy. He honestly no. might have just been trying to stop her. Yeah, he might have just been like a weirdo, like hiding as a human and not knowing how to act. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, think like, about think about the fact that she figures him out, and then they invite him over for dinner. He comes over to have a nice dinner, and he doesn't try to eat her before that, you know? That's true, because theoretically, he knows the secret's out. God, do you think in his mindset, he doesn't even know there's other monsters that eat monsters? Like, he seems to be so naive... He's like one of those fish that just spent their entire Aww. life unaware of even predators. Yeah, Aww, this man. is a sad story. <laughs> <laughs> like, Mr. This Mor- is a This is a sad story of mean monsters who hurt people and then kill them. And poor Mr. Mormon. <laughs> probably like the last of his kind. I, I like to think if he caught Lucy, he wouldn't have eaten her. He would have been like, please... Please just understand. I know I seem like a hideous thing, but I just want to, I just love books. I just love literature and eating bugs. Please don't hurt me. Just like, don't tell anyone. Like, that would probably have been his move if he had gotten a hold of her. Yeah. He was a good guy. He just cared about books. <laughs> he seemed he like out, a pretty good guy. He gave out prizes. I mean, he was eating those flies. I hate, I hate flies. So. Flies suck. <laughs> Mr. Warby, hey, best best character in this whole book series so far yeah man I don't know anything about turtles really I haven't had a lot of interactions with them but they're probably pretty shitty too a lot of times Pro- yeah probably they bite people yeah. and you know he was introducing her to the classics or trying to he was trying to make her a better person he's like you humans did something right <laughs> 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 your books are good <laughs> 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 I, like okay. vo- I really like where his voice evolved to <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. To yeah well place. there's there's gross guy and then there's fly man <laughs> there's educate educated fly well-read fly man exactly he just oh i have uh, the collected works of kurt vonnegut for you <laughs> just like lucy come back Totally different voice as well, so I did nail that one as well. Uh, I think that's a perfect place to end end uh, the book on. That is well. Hey, this this gets two bumps out of ten. <laughs> uh, it's so close. I feel like it was so close to being the best one we ever had, and it just messed so far. I think when you posited it the way you did, where uh, at the beginning, where like like they were, well, I forget exactly the way you posited it, but where they became like the bad guys of it more so. Hmm where they were kind of luring this guy into a trap that got, that changed it for me. That changed. It yeah. That changed, that changed around. For, are you, are you reevaluating the ranking of this one? I, 
It was worst. It was worst. <laughs> it was. It was. It wasn't great. Nah, still worse. She's. I, she's the biggest piece of shit we've dealt with. She's. It's the worst. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta say that I think that we're in for some decent ones coming up because yeah. I, I. You know. Uh, Living Dummy wasn't bad, right? That was a pretty decent one. That one had some yeah. shares in it. Living Dummy is a classic for a reason. Yeah. So, you know, I have a feeling that we have some pretty good ones coming up. Do you know which which, which is the next? Uh, I can look it up pretty quickly with you. I'm looking forward to... I know it's far off. Is it Ghost Next Door? Is that one? Is Welcome, that it? The invis- Welcome the to invis- Camp Nightmare, which I read, and it is a spooker. Wait, 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 wait. Okay, oh. that's the one with like the eyes out of the tent, right? Yeah. Okay, I keep waiting for Camp. Je- Welcome to Camp Jelly Jam. I feel like there's multiple camps. There's there, oh, oh, there's a few camps. There's the uh, the werewolf one. Oh yeah, Camp uh, Werewolf, right? There's the Ghost Camp one. Guys, there's I- Camp Jelly Jam. There's oh. one. It's just called Ghost Camp, by the way. <laughs> okay, camp for ghosts. Yeah. Yeah. I have that one signed. I have that one signed by T. Jacobs, by the way. Nine might not be. I might not. I might be wrong. That might have been the British nine. I might have like been the wrong. Ger- like the German nine that's the no? <laughs> yeah, it might have been like the German nine. <laughs> <laughs> no, it is. It's Welcome uh, to Camp Nightmare. That's next. I'm excited for Welcome to Camp Nightmare. Uh, we can wrap up the summer with a summer camp book. Oh, that's oh wonderful. I think that's enough of this terrible, terrible bug-eating monster <laughs> and the people who murdered him. Uh, guys, thank you so much for listening to the show. Uh, your feedback and everything for Goosebumps, uh, for Goosebuds, is excellent. Uh, if you really want to help out the show... Other than telling a friend, which is an amazing thing to do, uh, please go on iTunes or whatever you listen to podcasts and leave a review. It helps us out a ton. There's been amazing reviews. I have uh, one from JF Maddox who says, hilarious, five stars. Goosebuds is a brilliant podcast where Chad, Dom, and Paul dissect the Goosebumps book series. If you're not familiar with these books, they come from the barely functioning imagination of R.L. Oh, Stein. <laughs> That's a kind, of a, kind of a bird. And the, author, <laughs> and the author uses the series to explore his clearly twisted sexuality by writing stories about the lives of the most boring kids to ever exist. That's true. The podcast itself, yeah, it's pretty much true. The podcast itself is a riot with the guys poking fun at the books from every conceivable angle and making super taste 9-11 jokes if you read the very taste the, the taste the most tasty of 9-11 jokes <laughs> if you read the goosebump books or even if you have it you are sure to enjoy this podcast well that's real nice of jf man oh, well thank you yeah thank you i got one from omega bagel and he says spook tastic five stars this podcast Ooh. is spookier than a Dracula giving Slappy an HJ in a haunted Denny's. <laughs> <laughs> I never thought about Slappy having a dick, but I guess so. I never thought about a haunted Denny's. It's right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, t- the grand slam that never ends. <laughs> Moon's over my head. I, I will say one time I went to Denny's with, uh, they had unlimited uh, all you can drink hot chocolate. Oh. And I drank so much of it because out of guilt because the guy just kept bringing hot chocolates by. So I got really sick, so that was pretty spooky. <laughs> yeah, but on, in that guy's mind, he was like, man, that guy ate so much hot chocolate. I'm glad I gave him so much. He had a great day. <laughs> you were doing it for him, Chad. Yeah, yeah. I was doing it for him, and he was doing it for me, and we both realized we were just killing each other. Yep. Well, that's mostly life. That's most of what life is. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I got an, I got another one from uh, Noel Noel says more buds than goose. So far, the goose has yet to show itself, but I digress. Hearing these guys share stories and become super critical about this beloved children's horror series that any '90s kid remembers circling in the scholastic order forms, hoping their parents would order for them. This and those crazy animorph books. I love animorphs. Let's talk about animorphs. <laughs> where's Where's that podcast? Anyway, give this one a listen, not just for the nostalgia. But for the laughs and neurotic stories, Yay. the laugh stalgia, the, the laugh stalgia. Uh, quickly trademark that because someone at Comedy Central needs to <laughs> collect the number. Yeah, <laughs> they're like, okay, can we air old episodes of Coach? Okay, <laughs> yeah, laugh stalgia. Put it in the laugh stalgia block. <laughs> There's some Nick, laughs. Dauber, make you laugh. Nick at night. I got the tagline for you. <laughs> Uh, I got one from Stu Manchu. This show gives me a goosebumps on my Slappy. Again, Slappy's <laughs> dick is coming up in these reviews a lot of times. I Wait, that might have been, oh, you know why? I forgot we read all that Slappy erotic fan fiction. I forgot that's oh why my, that happened. That's uh, right. That's right. Yeah, well, how could we forget? Yep. <laughs> so Stu Manchu <laughs> said, I absolutely love this podcast. I followed Paul and Dom prior on their other podcasts, and I'm glad I gave this one a chance. Chad is a cool dude, and you have three, and you three have great chemistry. I look forward to hearing more puberty metaphors. 
<laughs> that's horrifying because I don't remember the puberty metaphors. So that's yep. great. You know what is nice, though, is that's basically saying, I like these three friends. Oh, yep. that's real nice. And we're good friends, guys. We, we are. are. Good friends. I'm hugging you through the internet right now. I don't know if you can tell, but I'm reaching out. Oh, I can tell. It's oh, cold. Feel the warmth. It's very cold. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's freezing, actually. It's kind of spooky. Also, the other great people who reach out to us, uh, if you don't, on the Goosebuds subreddit, you can follow us on reddit slash r slash Goosebuds. Also, you can follow us on Twitter at Goosebuds. There are tons of you guys who give amazing shout outs to your friends and your followers and your family on Twitter. Uh, people like Sean Young and TJ Denzer and Josh Howell, uh, Tuxedo Mob, Lisa Flynn, uh, Film Enigma, Brody Foxall. Dak Prinky, you guys are all amazing. Thank you for sharing the word of Goosebuds to your friends and also just talking to us. It's great to know you guys are enjoying what we do. And thanks to Will Wheaton. And thanks to and <laughs> at Will Wheaton one L. Thanks to Will Wheaton. There King. is no I he he has not tweeted at the show, <laughs> but I just I felt like Chad wanted that said. No, nope, no, nope, <laughs> definitely have definitely am a huge fan of Will Wheaton and don't think he is just using nerd culture as a way to make money and use other people's love. And I am speaking about the most beloved person in nerdom. And I would I would hate if something terrible happened to both Chris Hardwick and Will Whedon. <laughs> Not that they died, but just that if they, like, stopped doing everything they're doing and just left my mind, uh, uh, I just alienated everyone because everyone loves Will Whedon and Chris Hardwick. But anyway... Thanks for thanks for thanks for bringing that up. Thanks for bringing Chad, that up. Chad's words. Chad, uh, I just checked the Twitter after this episode posted, and instead of followers, we just have a tumbleweed spinning on our Twitter. <laughs> yeah, it's a cool gift, but it there is it's gone. I w- it's oh, all gone. gone. They're gone. Listen, if Will Weed wants to come on the show and and bro down about Goosebump books, I would love to. That sounds great. And also about how he was the worst character on Star Trek. Let's talk about it. <laughs> Anyway, sorry, sorry to offend all Will Wheaton fans. Um, no, no apologies. You need better nerd role models. There's better nerd role models out there. Yeah, like uh, Chad. Chad. I think we have to get off the internet. Okay, now. all right. Is, I, I can... think, I think, I think it, they're starting to get crazy over. Yeah, here. I can start to follow like a, a tracking program that just seems to show Will Wheaton's face has appeared on my computer, and I'm a little scared. <laughs> so maybe we should, maybe we should sign out. Uh, guys, any parting words? Uh, thanks for listening to the show, and. Uh, Thanks for uh, being patient with us. Yes. Yeah. We finally got to this one, but I felt like we had a good time today, and I think you had a good time listening to us. Oh, yeah, of yeah. course. We had to mention, yeah, we we take a little while to make episodes, but we try as much as we can and appreciate you guys sticking around. Uh, it's quality, not quantity. Exactly. But the quality hey, the, the is okay. October comes around, you're going to marathon the whole series. So, Oh, shit. Okay, we'll just yeah. do a 24-hour live stream where we just read all the books out loud. Out loud to each other. Out loud to yes. each other, and that would it'll be, awesome. be unlistenable. <laughs> well, because we'll all be reading them at the same time at each other. And it'll just be <laughs> yes. Yes. Different Goosebump books all to each other at the same time. <laughs> yes. And at one point, they'll sync up perfectly where it said, and then a monster jumped out at me, and we'll all go... <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. There's a line. Yeah, there's a there's a unifying line that's just, but it was just my keys. <laughs> uh, I, love guy, you. I love you guys. I love you guys. Love too. you guys. This is fun. We have fun. Uh, <laughs> Dom, I feel like, are you the guy who just now has the call sign out where you have like a song or something? I feel like there's something we do, but yeah, I can't remember yeah, anything. Uh, I think... I think yeah, I think it's called bumping, and it's the, the where I just sing a song like a hot hip hop jam until we don't have any more podcast left, and then it's gone. Bump it out, Bobby. Bump it out, please. Here it, it goes. Okay. Bumping, I'm bumping. It's outside like beatboxing. It's yeah. not necessarily rap because it's just <laughs> hip hop. It's just a hot hip hop yeah, bump. Uh-huh. Yeah. Right, right. Bump, yeah, yeah. bump, 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 bump. Bunga chica, bunga chica. <laughs> I like the train you added into it. <laughs> bump, 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 bump. Okay. Dom, I free you from this curse. I free you from this curse. I've inflicted <laughs> Thank on you. you. Thank you, Sam. All right. I'm <laughs> burning. I'm burning my. I'm a burn transition into a satyr. <laughs> Thank you, Sam. <laughs> a satyr just right. wailing away on his on a sitar. <laughs> he also freed me from humanity. <laughs> that was a prison I was also in. Now I'm back to my my satyr self. <laughs> All right, guys, I love you. I'll see you guys soon. I love see you. See you guys soon. Bye, Bye everybody. Bye.